I'm going to show you two ways to dress up the Dollar Tree candy cane. Keep watching. So we're going to be working with the smaller tinsel covered piece of decor candy cane. This is not the actual metal frame that you can get, but there is a metal, a metal one too that's larger than this. You could do it the same way, pretty much, as far as wrapping and such. But we're going to use the smaller one today. I'm going to try to keep this tinsel intact uh, as much as I can because I can use this again on another project or since my children like to craft, I can give them all the little bits and pieces to do their own crafts. So we'll really be stretching the dollar there. Just gonna cut one piece in the white and one piece in the red and start unwinding. They're wrapped around these little nubs that stick out. Don't worry about those, we're gonna Got a solution for that shortly as well because we are not going to be using the same winding method with our ribbon. So there we go, lots of sturdy tinsel. I'm going to take my bull nose pliers and just start cutting off these little pieces. Now the reason to the remove these is that I'm going to be using sheer ribbon on one option and then I'm going to be using a yarn on the other option and I don't want it to snag anywhere and poke holes in there so we want to have a smooth surface we're going to start with this red and silver cane and I'm going to take this wired ribbon and wrap around starting by just tucking it into the bottom and then start wrapping it around the outside of the candy cane all the way up and around there is going to be a spot on the bottom of the candy cane and on the top back side that need to be patched but I'm going to show you how to fix that where it looks fairly seamless. Definitely not per perfect, but you know, it would be okay if you wanted to use it on a glass door, for instance. It would be neat enough on the back that it wouldn't be a problem, I think. This ribbon option was much easier than the yarn that I'll show you in just a minute. So I guess you could say that this will be more of a, I wouldn't necessarily say traditional, but maybe modern option. And then we'll do a rustic or farmhouse option in just a moment. So be sure that you hang out with me a little bit longer and I'll show you. All right, I'm gonna use a little hot glue. Careful, careful, this is sheer and it is very thin. You will burn yourself if you're not very, very careful. So I'm just using my scissors to help me hold it because I've dropped my spatula on the floor somewhere. All right, so we want to neaten up the end and cover up where we tucked it in. I'm just going to use a tad of glue there and then I'm going to make a little patch for it. You certainly can skip this part if you're not going to be putting it where the back side will be seen and it, obviously if you're not going to be selling it then it doesn't matter if you use it in your own home it doesn't bother you it's fine the way it was but see this option makes it a little bit neater then we're going to work on the top same process here you just want to try to, to cut a piece that will cover that spot and just neatly tack it down with the glue to close it off and that makes it a little bit better so there we go I'm going to show you a couple of options here first one is the original bow and snowflake from the original ornament or you can make your own this bow that I'm going to show you is called the funky bow you're going to cut 12 inch strips three of each of these colors and this ribbon came from the wedding section of the Dollar Tree be sure you look all around the store when you're looking for your, your ribbon and your tools and things like that because they could be in a variety of places. There's not as much on these rolls, maybe three yards on these rolls, so not as good of a value for your dollar, but you know, still nice, still a good value I think for a dollar. 
So we're going to take these and stack them together. You can stack them randomly. You can stack them like I did with the white together and the silver. It really doesn't matter. You're going to pinch them right in the middle and wrap a piece of floral wire around it. Then you're going to fluff out the ears or the top pieces. That's going to be the top of your bow. Always use the wired ribbon if you want it to stand out in these bigger bows. And then you're going to start pulling the tails that were on the bottom up on the sides. To me, this bow kind of looks like a flower. So you had a bunch of petals on the top and the little leaves spread out around it on the top. And you just pull it out and around to get it the shape that you like. Same thing with the top. And then you can start making some dovetails in your ribbon if you like or whichever, whichever way you want to do it. You can hot glue this down or you can wire it down. But for me, since I'm going to show you another option with this same candy cane, just giving you an idea. Okay, this one's a little more complicated, takes a little more time. First off, you're going to need to tie a knot and then you're going to wrap it toward the underside where it's concave. Then you're going to take the rest of that and wrap it, weave it through the bottom because you want to cover up your red frame. You can certainly take this outside, spray paint it if you want to so that nothing shows. But I'm going to show you what to do if you don't have spray paint because a lot of people don't have spray paint. You don't have to use this thick yarn that I have. This came from Goodwill and it had no label on it so I'm not sure where it originally came from. You can either get thick ribbon or you can use Dollar Tree options like the cotton rope or some of the, um, I don't know if it's a burlap rope or jute rope, something like that. They do have some options and you can use that. Even if you wanted to be really wacky and whimsical about it, you could use some of the clothesline rope which comes in a variety of colors and it's nylon and you can use that. But I've got the end finished there and I'm going to start wrapping my yarn around it. Keep those rows close together as you can and then use a little bit of hot glue to tack them together. You just press them down. Give them just a second for the glue to set up. And then anytime you see a little bit of space, just go ahead and put you another dot of glue. It doesn't take a lot. Just little dots here and there. And then continue to wind it around the cane. And you're going to do that until you get to the top of that straight piece. Now I'll wrap a little bit and then push the rows together. And that's when you want to add your glue in between. You could probably do maybe a nautical candy cane option if you like that the beachy look at Christmas time. That would be cute too, but this makes a good, I think, farmhouse or rustic look. Country, some people have like a country theme. You're going to need a little more glue around the curves. I don't want to get it too bulky in the center here. So I'm going to cut it off, add a little hot glue and put the clip on the back to let it sit up for a moment while I work on the end of the candy cane. So we're going to do this end the same way we did the other one. I'm going to tie a knot, put it toward the inside and then start wrapping the bottom. Get that close together so you don't have any gaps where the red frame is going to show. And maybe it wouldn't bother you, you know, if it's showing, but it would drive me nuts. I know myself well enough. And then you're going to stuff it on the inside, put a little bit of glue on there, whatever you need to do to make it stay. Now I'm adding 
my yarn rope back on there and I'm going to do the same thing as before, going to glue it down to the bottom, the first row, and then start the winding again. If I knew ahead of time all the ingredients you would need for what we're making on these crafts I would definitely post that ahead of time for you but most of the time I don't get my ideas that way I'll have some inspiration I'll get an idea and then I don't really know what I'm going to be using completely until I am doing it so I don't make a good list in the beginning and I do apologize for that if your your mind works that way and, and I'm not helping you with that. Okay, here we go. We're wrapping back and forth now to get around the center. It's going to get a little bit bulky there in the center. But that's where we're going to put our bow. So that really won't matter. See there how it's got kind of a thicker spot in the center? There's a little gap in there where we will tie our bow. I wanted to use this really pretty Dollar General ribbon. It is wired. I believe it's a two inch ribbon and it's got the red truck on it. I'm going to make a loop of this. This is, I think about a 10 inch loop. It's a 10 inch piece of ribbon. It's gonna be smaller than that once you glue it. You're just gonna make a loop. And while you're letting that dry, you're going to take another piece of ribbon that's going to be the tails. And I saw Caitlin from Crafts by Caitlin do a bow similar to this, and it's so simple. I'm going to use a piece of jute in the center and tie it off. And so honestly, there's no way to really even explain to you how to do this bow because you just saw me do it. It was that easy. I'm going to make sure that my bow, that the knot is in the center and I'm going to make a double knot. Then I'm going to dovetail the ends. And I'm going to string one piece of that jute through the middle and then tie it down. And that's simple. Simple enough, right? Okay. You can trim off your pieces of jute there and fluff the bow. We're gonna add one more thing on here. Some of these bells. I got these from Dirt Cheap and I have no idea where they originally came from. But you can get these anywhere pretty much in the Christmas sections. These look like they're tarnished and old, so I really like that about them. I think it gives a good rustic look. I'm just doing double knots and a touch of glue there so they don't slip out. Then I'm going to wrap it around the center of the bow and let them hang down. And that is that. Now if you want a hanger, you can use a piece of this stem, make your loop, close the end, a little hot glue, a little paper paper band-aid there and you are good to go. So those are your two options. I use the same candy cane to do both of them so the final result is this one which is the rustic farmhouse look which is what I enjoy in my home. I certainly hope you enjoyed it. Which one did you like best? Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you again soon. Bye.